Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Church Milton has been given a secret video recording of Chicago Cardinal Blaise Supich schmoozing with very wealthy donors at a Christmas gathering in the Archdiocese's palatial mansion just this past Christmas. The video was recorded by someone present at the meeting, deeply concerned about Supich's responses during an open mic question and answer forum. Watch and listen to the Cardinal's response to a question about the possibility of women being ordained priests. When are we going to have women priests is the question. I think, I, I think, I think I'd like to give that question to somebody else. I, I, is, this is, uh, is, is there, what do they call that, the, uh, the, the, those lines, the lifelines? You know? uh, I, I get at least one of those, so. <laughs> That's a smarmy, oily response, and one completely unbefitting of a prince of the church, a successor of the apostles. He simply rejected out of hand, telling the assembled, the perennial church's teaching that, as Pope St. John Paul II definitively taught, the church has no authority to confer holy orders on women, period. It's a closed matter. So why not just say that, Cardinal? Instead of shutting the door as a sainted pope did, repeating again what the entire 2,000-year sacred tradition of the church has always taught, you are duty-bound to repeat that. But you refused. Now, perhaps your sly, devilish response with that cute little quip would be the PC way of avoiding any of the naive millionaires sitting in front of you. Wouldn't want to offend any of them, especially ones with more liberal tendencies and cause them to hold back those millions, which was the entire reason for the gathering in the first place. Blaise Supich is a raging hypocrite and a liar. A hypocrite because he is constantly spewing out the church of the poor garbage. Those must have been the poor millionaires inside the banquet, as opposed to the horribly filthy rich millionaires that he and his ilk are always attacking, but inviting to secret gatherings to put the squeeze on them. The senior members of the hierarchy have these kinds of meetings and gatherings all the time, putting the touch on malformed Catholic millionaires who get to add to their egos by getting personal calls from the cardinal or the archbishop. The bishops schmooze and cajole and chortle, whispering sweet nothings, and we do mean nothings, into the ears of the rich who like rubbing elbows with cardinals and such and then write handsome checks. They're feeding the evil beast of the hierarchy who uses that money in part to ship good priests off to nut houses for revenge and pay extravagant legal bills to cover up their misdeeds. Funny there's no one-liners about all that. But the soupage stand-up routine didn't end there. One of the wealthy donors asked him a question about the holdup on the canonization of Bishop Sheen. Well, uh, yes, please. Any news on Bishop Sheen? On uh, uh, Bishop Sheen's uh, beatification? No. I think that uh, what we've seen in the media is that uh, uh, Bishop Matano, who is uh, uh, the bishop up in, uh, in uh, Rochester, uh, indicated that uh, there were uh, documents given over to the Attorney General in New York and uh, there was a concern that uh, it wasn't clear how uh, Fulton Sheehan handled some cases. And until that's done, the Holy See has decided to, uh, to delay uh, all that until the Attorney General comes out with his, uh, his report in New York. I think that's, that's, made, that's the major question that we have with that. Uh, it, was, uh, it was between Rochester and, and uh, Bishop Jenke in, in, uh, in Peoria. Well, while his answer is technically correct, he was very deceitful in how he presented it. He was specifically named and one of the addressees on the letter asking for the canonization process to be delayed. And most importantly, he backed the move, him along with Cardinal Dolan. So to brush the question aside like it was just some sideshow between two minor bishops of which he just had some passing knowledge and no real input, which is the clear implication there. That's cowardly and deceitful. But again, this is how these men all operate. They lie, they dissemble, they deceive, and they BS their way around sticky issues with audiences filled with dumbed-down, low-information individuals. 
The Catholic millionaires of Chicago may be great at making money, but they're woefully behind the eight ball when it comes to knowing that they are being completely snowed by a cover-up lying, cheating cardinal who's playing them for fools. And an important note here, Catholics everywhere should always be recording everything said and done by these men. Give them no quarter, no place to hide, hold them accountable for every word out of their lying or deceitful mouths. Pull out your cell phones whenever they're in public and push that record button. If you're in a position to get copies of documents, copy them and get things on the record. These men are such habitual liars and dissemblers that they will persist in their filth until they are busted. Remember, it was a secret recording of the lying, cheating Richard Malone of Buffalo, which finally brought him down. And that after a trove of documents had already been revealed. Likewise, it was the release by Church Militant of a videotaped deposition of Crookston Bishop Michael Hepner, showing him lying and being deceptive under oath, which finally got him to be the first bishop on earth to be investigated by the Vatican under the Pope's new rules for cover-up bishops. And it was the release by Church Militant of a secret police audio recording of Saginaw priest Father Robert DeLand, showing him trying to convince a 17-year-old that he was really gay and should masturbate to gay porn and then report back to him that finally landed him in jail. Get them on the record any way you can. It's all got to come out, every last bit of it, and you are instrumental in doing this. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.